I'm Liz Luke. Welcome to Vintage Vehicle. We're here today in Concord, North Carolina at the Backing Up Classics Car Museum in the shadow of Lowe's Motor Speedway. Inside are some of the most incredible classic cars you'll ever see. We're also going to meet a gentleman who knows quite a bit about a lot of these cars. Let's go on in. Let's take a look. We're here in the party room of the Backing Up Classics Car Museum, here with Jay Morrison, who is the general manager of the museum, works it with his father. What is this room again, the party room? Yeah, we rent this room out for uh, displays of like people and having parties and get-togethers and stuff for anniversaries, uh, weddings, mm -hmm. receptions, just a little bit of anything anybody wants to use it for. And I'm thinking in the heart of racing country, this is probably a pretty popular place to be for something like that, isn't it? Yeah, everybody likes it because it's right next to the Lowe's Motor Speedway mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it really works good. What's your interest in all of this? I mean, were you born into all of this? Has it kind of rubbed off on you? Because you're a pretty young guy. Yeah, my grandfather always uh, bought and sold cars when my dad was younger. Uh, probably had at one time probably 15 40 Fords sitting in the yard really and stuff and how'd he, your mom feel about <laughs> that yeah, yeah well my mom and my grandmother they were real understanding uh they just knew us in the blood mm -hmm. and stuff and my dad started doing it when he come back from vietnam he started with the our dealership and everything mm -hmm. and i've grown up in it it's all i've ever done about 30 years in the business then yeah uh, since 1970. wow yeah. that's terrific no, how do you hope to expand? I mean, like you say, you're in the shadow of the Lowe's Motor Speedway. You can only get bigger with that. Yeah, we, uh, this building needs to be about twice its size because we could fill it up with cars and memorabilia and stuff that my dad has and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, we either need to add another museum <laughs> local <laughs> or expand this one. And you keep adding things every year, don't you? Yeah, we change it out a pretty good bit. A lot, a lot of the cars are for sale, some's not. So that way we can change the museum out and make different uh, cars in here, mm -hmm. uh, but we keep switching them out. Try to keep something new. About twice a year, we'll go through and switch about 10 or 15 cars out uh -huh. uh, regularly, and then over the year, we'll switch out a few here and there. Where do you put them? You must have a warehouse that's unbelievable yeah. somewhere. Yeah, we have another dealership here in town that we do a lot of the late model cars and odors too, and we'll just take late model cars and older cars from there to special and bring them over here and vice versa, switch them back and forth. And your gift shop's pretty amazing too. Yeah, my sister does a good job with that. She uh, keeps a lot of different memorabilia for racing and a little automotive, plus a little vintage stuff in there. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of the vintage stuff in there uh, from all the past drivers and crew of chiefs and everything. You have lots of cars out here. Can we go take a look? Yeah, we sure can. Jay, what can you tell us about the car we're standing in front of right now? This is a 1965 Corvette Coupe uh, 396 425 horse. They only made a couple thousand of these in 65. It's mm -hmm. a real limited production number with the big block and everything. Uh, it's got factory leather seats, telescopic steering. Uh, probably one of the last cars we restored. We used to restore some cars years ago and just with our dealership took a lot of our time so we quit. But this is probably one of the last ones we restored. My father's had it since probably the mid 80s. Really? Mm -hmm. How fast has he gotten it? You know he's uh, taken it out. We probably hadn't put 50 miles on it since the mid 80s. We just, we enjoy them looking at them more than we do driving them. Mm -hmm. we're, we're opposite a lot of people. I don't, we don't, we stay so busy with work. We don't take a lot of time to drive them and enjoy them like we should. Mm -hmm. Corvettes have an amazing following. What's special about this one? Because it's such a limited number? Yeah, because of the 396, 425 in it, uh, that's only 2,000 of them produced. Uh, actually had more horsepower than it did cubic inches. Okay. So it was a pretty special car in 1965. And how did your dad get a hold of this one? Mm, gentlemen up towards Troy, North Carolina, they had it uh, and had it for years. And uh -huh. we ended up bought it in a 57 Pontiac from them also. Must have been in pretty good shape for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a real good car. It just, it, they had painted the wrong color and done a couple little things to it, and we put it all back like it was supposed to be mm -hmm. and stuff. Must be a labor of love to restore these cars. Yeah, my wife asked me, how do you work on cars and sell cars all day long and still like to do it at night myself? And it's like I tell her, there's just no telephones for questions to be asked. It's just uh, me and the car. Amazing that you can do something that you love so much. Yeah, I, uh, it's just real good that I get to uh, do it at work and uh, just enjoy it. The older cars are the hobby for us. Mm -hmm. The new cars is more of our business. If you were to sell something like this, about how much would it go for? Uh, these big block cars have really got high in the last few years. Uh, 
I wouldn't be surprised at eighty, ninety thousand dollars and stuff on them as high as they've got. Probably more than that. I wouldn't price it and mm -hmm. not want to sell it for that much money. And what can you tell us about this car? This is a nineteen sixty three Chevrolet Impala Super Sport. It's uh, only got thirteen thousand original miles on it. Pretty much all original, other than the battery, the gas and oil that was in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been showed in several national shows. Uh, it's won like a platinum certificate uh, in one of them. Uh, just an unrestored car, it's mm -hmm. all original. Where did your father find this gem? A gentleman that has a big collection, he had it in his collection and was selling off some of them to change them out. And we purchased it from him probably about eight or nine months ago. We haven't had it too long. It's gotta be really exciting when you come across something that's in this great shape, that's that classic of a vehicle. And, and all of a sudden it's yours. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, it uh, makes the worth getting up in the morning. You mm -hmm. really enjoy when you find something like this uh, to have it, own it, and appreciate it. Tell me a little bit about the difference cars have, have changed out from 1965 when this car was made to 2007 today. Well, it seems like there's, it's missing something. They're just not as, I don't know, classic. Some, something that makes, makes you want to buy a car. Yeah, these cars have a lot more style and character. Uh, a lot of people remember them when they were new and local drive-ins and everything, just uh, hitting those and shows and stuff with them. Uh, this car, you can build a lot of late model cars out of this one car with all the metal in it and everything. Is this a real big, hot car at those cruisings? Yeah, a lot of people like the Impalas and stuff because that's what they had years ago when they were driving. Their mom might have had one because it's got the big back seat and everything mm -hmm. in it. Uh, and that's why they want them now, because of memories. Tell us about this one. This is a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Uh, it's got the DZ302 and the four speed. Uh, Roy Orbison, the singer, he actually purchased this car new. My father purchased it from a gentleman that bought it out of a museum in Nashville. We got all the paperwork documenting it back to him. It only has 30,000 original miles on it. Uh, factory 8-track on the dash. Uh, just a real good car, never been restored. Uh, like my father, he was in Vietnam in 69 and 70. Uh, like he said, when he come back, from Vietnam. This is what you could have took the money you made in Vietnam and bought was a 69 Z28, which is about $4,000. So uh, at that time, he didn't just spend all his money purchasing that. He bought a couple cars and different things and bought and sold uh, to get where we're at today and everything. Did this start the craze really for sports cars like this? Yeah, the Camaros uh, started in 67 all the way up to 2002. Um, they're just real popular. Uh, we have several of them my dad has in his collection of the Z28 69s. Mm -hmm. How fast does this one get? Yeah, they do pretty good. They're more of a drag strip car. Really? More, yeah, more of a stoplight to stoplight with the way they're geared and everything. Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken it out? Uh, this one I have, and I've drove a lot of the other ones we have. Mm -hmm. Is this a favorite of yours? I mean, you, you kind of gravitated toward this one. Yeah, I've got one at home that I've had a big block car for about 15 years, uh, Rally Sport Super Sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, my first car was a 69 Camaro, so uh, I'm pretty partial to those. Sentimental reasons. Yeah, sure am. Very good. This is an amazing car, Thunderbird. Always a classic, always a favorite. Yeah, this is a little 1957 Thunderbird. Uh, pretty unusual. It's a manual transmission. A lot of these were uh, automatics mm -hmm. and this one's actually a manual. It's been all restored uh, down to the wire wheels and the factory style wide white wall tires that's on it. Uh, just a neat car. You really, uh, the Thunderbirds have never really caught on like the Corvettes and stuff like that. I don't think in price and stuff. I mean you get your die hard Thunderbird people that like the Thunderbirds and uh, you got your Corvette people that like those, but this, uh, they're really neat cars. They really have pretty lines. Uh, I like all cars, and this, uh, the Thunderbirds one too. Uh, is this the original color? Yeah, it's a very unusual rare color in 57. This is all factory color inside and out. It's got a white convertible top that really goes good with this color. It'd be a great ladies car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see a lot of ladies that purchase these cars. Mm -hmm. We have sold several over the years to ladies. Mm -hmm. What's more special about this car as far as the classicness, if that's a word, of it? Just to me, the lines and everything, the, the way the car flows, the back ends with the little fins and everything on it, it just, uh, it's just a pretty car. It's a classy car. Yes. Anytime they make a song about one, uh, it becomes a pretty popular car. Amen to that. <laughs> there you go.
This is a tough looking car. It's a cool car. Yeah, this is a little 1966 Ford Fairlane GTA. Uh, it's got the 390 big motor. Uh, it's a cross between a family car and a muscle car with the big 390 cubic inch motor and stuff in it. This car only has 16,000 original miles on it. How did you come across this one? We had actually owned it back about 81 mm -hmm. and my father sold it to a gentleman at a big national car show and he was flipping through one of the local national publications uh, for the, just to see if they, what was in there. And the gentleman had it for sale again and he realized it was the car he had. And the same gentleman he sold it to actually owned it. So he went and sent a gentleman to Vermont to pick it up for us. Um, it's per we took the original tires off of it. It still had the original tires on it when we purchased the car. It's in terrific shape. Mm -hmm. It's all original too. The paint, interior, everything about the car is original other than like the tires and the battery. I'm amazed it went through a north northern winter and it's in this yeah. amazing shape. The gentleman that had it just kept it stored. Mm -hmm. He's just like us, had a heat and climate control garage and kept it in there and just washed it and rubbed on it and waxed it and showed it a little bit. But cars like this, like you say, cross between a muscle car and a family car, very functional. Yep, sure is. You can go to the local grocery store and get your groceries and uh, go to local drag strip on the weekends. This is another car that has a song written about it. Yeah, this is a little 62 Chevrolet bubble top 409. It's got the factory 2-4 barrel with the four speed, uh, like the Beach Boys song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a real neat car. It's been totally rotisserie restored back in the 80s. Uh, down to the uh, floor pans are even primed like they were in the factory. Really? That is a labor of love. Yeah, it sure is. They really did a lot of extra work on this car, back to the factory tack and just everything's put back as correct as you can put it to the factory window sticker still in the uh, window. That's amazing, searching around to get all of the parts and to put them in properly and it's just an unbelievable labor of love. Yes, it sure is. When this car was restored, it didn't reproduce a lot of parts for one. Now you can pretty much pick up a magazine or go on the internet and buy any parts you need for one. Back when they restored this car, you had to find new old stock NOS parts to do the car, so it took a lot longer and was a lot harder to do than it is now. What kind of shape was it in before it was restored? We purchased it just like you see it, so I never seen the car before it was restored, but you can tell, because it's been, the car's been restored mm -hmm. about 15, 20 years, you can tell that the car was a really good car before it was restored because it doesn't have any signs of any problems coming mm -hmm. back with it. Very good. And who would have bought a car like this new back in the 60s? Uh, mostly drag racers. Oh, that's, really? That's what these cars were known for, their drag racing history and stuff, because it's just a stripped down, plain Jane, big motor. A uh, car that you put a, you could take right off the showroom floor, put a set of slicks on it, and go to the drag strip and outrun anybody there about with it. And what can you tell us about this fabulous machine? This is a 1967 Hemi Satellite, uh, four-speed, 426 Hemi. My dad's had it since the 80s, but now they're saying they found about 10 or 15 total of the 67 models. But that's still unbelievable compared to the millions of cars that roll off assembly lines today. Yeah, it sure is. They made several 66 Hemi satellites, but the 67s were, I don't know why, they just didn't make a lot of them in 67. Mm -hmm. uh, this car's been in a lot of national magazines back in the mid to early, late 80s, all in the 80s there. Um, from car craft to a lot of those uh, for the car. It's just mm -hmm. a real neat car. Uh, the guy found it actually in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The guy had bought it to uh, make a drag car out of it mm -hmm. and it was just sitting behind his house and never did. And the gentleman that my per dad purchased it from, he's all into Mopars and knows a lot about them and happened to catch a glimpse of it behind the gentleman's house. Did the gentleman who owned it realize what he had? <laughs> Somewhat. Okay. I mean, anything, he knew it had a Hemi in it, so he knew he had something that was collectible and valuable mm -hmm. and stuff, which they've really, over the 90s and 2000s, have really come on strong compared to what they were when they, we purchased the car. I mean, we had it for sale locally forever for about $16,000, and no one would purchase it, so huh. my dad uh, decided to keep it. And when he decided to keep it, it seemed like the, he got lucky and the value started going up on the Hemi cars a lot more than it was. Sure, this must be pretty much your, your baby here. This is something that you want to put the big red ribbon around, make sure everyone who comes through the museum takes a look at this one. Yeah, this car, we just put it in here about a year ago and stuff. We had it put up in another building and we just moved it in here to kind of display it and show it off because it is so unusual. Mm -hmm. The refab on this, how did that go? It was a pretty good car. I had, he had a lot of pictures from when he started the car, and it was a real good car when he started. So uh, 
uh, repaint and just uh, cosmetic stuff, uh -huh. rebuild the motor and stuff like that. Very good. But how many miles are on it? I don't sure. He didn't have uh, the gentleman didn't know what the correct miles of. Was it was in the back of his house. <laughs> yep, just sitting out there in the backyard with grass growing around it. That's crazy. It's a beautiful car. Yes, thank you. It's uh, about as neat a car as you can find in here. <laughs>
for any NASCAR fan being this close to Terry Labonte's car is really amazing. Tell us about this. Yeah, this is the 88 Monte Carlo that Terry Labonte won the 88 Winston race here at the Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte. Uh, they say it was one of the last Chevrolets, if not the last one, Junior Johnson built as a Chevrolet. Uh, it's been run at some of the big super speedways too, like Talladega. Uh, it's straight off the track. I mean, it's got the rock chips and the stone marks and the tire marks and everything just like it left a track. Uh, never been repainted. Uh, we have a lot of the memorabilia and pictures and uh, signatures and where Junior Johnson sold the car to the gentleman we purchased it from. Uh, it's always been a museum piece. The guy we had it got it from purchased it and put it in a museum up in the mountains and my dad purchased it about five years ago and put it in our museum. We have it out now because we had loaned it to the Speedway for a uh, event they were having and just hadn't put it back in there. Well this is definitely the prime example of what you have here at the Backing Up Classic Cars Museum. I mean, this is amazing stuff. Yeah, we was pretty fortunate to find this car in the condition and with all the paperwork we have with it to uh, show what uh, racing way it was made in 88 with the way they built the cars then. A lot different than now. That's terrific. You have an incredible museum here. Tell people watching how they can get more information. Maybe they want to come out to Concord, North Carolina and check you out. Yeah, we're just located one mile north of the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Uh, we have a website which is backingupclassics.com. You can go to and get more information or you can call our local number which is 704-788-9500. Thank you so much for joining us here at Backing Up Classics Car Museum in Concord, North Carolina, right in the shadow of Lowe's Motor Speedway. For Vintage Vehicle, I'm Liz Lee.